Hi, my name is Kurt Chafee and I'm the lead pastor here at New Song Church. We are committed to reach people far from God with the gospel of Jesus Christ and to help equip people to be all that they have been created to be. Thanks for joining us as we celebrate the goodness of God together. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys? Well, we're glad you're here with us to celebrate the goodness of God together. This is a special family service we're doing. And uh, yes, hi. If you're a guest with us this morning, special welcome to you as well. So like I said, this is the family service. We do this a couple times a year. And uh, we're going to be doing some prizes. And so have your tickets ready for us to draw here in a little bit. Uh, we're going to have Justin and Leanne. Justin works for Club Radio here on campus. And he's going to, him and his fiance Leanne are going to be doing some stuff here pretty quick. And then Austin and Shane from Kids Ministry are going to be sharing. And the first service was awesome. So we're excited for that. Um, as you heard, we're going to Israel tomorrow morning and so please we would love for you to pray for us as we're there and then also tune into club radio throughout the week and you can try to catch us on there broadcasting from israel if, and if you know the new testament as gentiles reaching out from israel back to gentiles is an incredible prophetic thing biblically but anyway so uh, also next sunday we have um a veterans day service where uh, we're gonna have some vets and Kevin Kramer is gonna be sharing and we're gonna have a special song by Armani. She's gonna sing the national anthem. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So that's next Sunday. Yeah, kids, you can come on up here. And uh, so that's next Sunday, the 10th for Veterans Day. No, not right now, she's not gonna sing. Yes, here she's gonna sing. Okay, that's my daughter. So she has to get all the info here as we go. Anyway, so uh, again, we're glad that you guys are here with us to celebrate the goodness of God. And so here's Justin with Club Radio, and they're going to do some, some prizes. Thanks for coming, you guys. Good morning, everybody. Uh, well, oh, yeah, it's still morning. Okay. You have to be loud because we have prizes for kids and adults. So I need loudness, please. Come here. Thank you. My goodness, people. So who came to trunk or treat? Who came to trunk? Ah, nice. Who did a trunk? Okay, we're going to have the winners here soon. But first, we have the bike giveaways, which uh, we drew them in first service. And then if they're not here, you still win the bike. And my lovely assistant slash fiance is going to tell who won the bikes. Um, the girl bike goes to Ariana Lave. Um, her parents' name is Casey Lave. So if you're here, you can come claim your bike after service. And if you're not, we'll just give you a call. Um, the boys' bike goes to Drayton, and parents' name is Tammy. Okay. So, are y'all ready for this? This is for. Uh, they're in first service, some of the people already got their gift cards, so if they don't come up, be like, do I get their gift cards? No, you don't get their gift cards. Jeez. My goodness. So, uh, last minute prize. This is the people that look like they threw their prize together really, really quick. I mean, their boost together really, really quick. And the winner of that was Larry and Gail Schuler. Give it up for them. They're here during first. Best costume. Uh, went to the one and the only Travis Cattermas. That's Moses. Look at that. Isn't that glorious? I'll tell ya. Uh, let's see. Best act. Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. Is my, is my Scooby-Doo people here? There's one. Come get your gift card. Get up here. Run. Run. Fast. Quickly. There you go. Y'all can all go for coffee. Okay, so we're ready for this. The uh, committee's choice for best trunk was the Wizard of Oz with Tanner and, and Chelsea and all those guys that did a great job. Good job. And then, ladies and gentlemen, Peeper's choice for the 2013 Trunk or Treats for the best trunk, go to the Ericsons. Somebody come get it. Yeah, so that's awesome. 
They won as the Egyptian people. Good job. Here you go. Y'all can go to lunch today. Okay, so I have a question. Did everybody, did all the adults get a red ticket? If you did not get a red ticket, raise your hand really quickly. And the assistant, that, that, that there's people everywhere. Run, Leslie, run, let the win. Okay, so while they do that, we have, the kids all have a yellow ticket, right kids? And we're gonna draw some names, we're gonna draw some numbers here. First, we're gonna start with the junior hires, which is over here. Okay, junior hires, stand up. Oh, there they are, I knew they were all in one place. Are you ready for this, junior hires? You ready? I have, because I'm gonna draw it twice, two $50 gift cards to Best Buy, or anywhere, they're actually visas. Are you ready for this? Here we go. The winner is three, nine, nine, five, one, eight. Five, one, eight. Who's my winner? No winner? No winner? Okay. Try it again. How did it go? Okay, three, nine, nine, five, two, two. Five, two, two. There we go. I was like, come on. I can't go through too many. There you go. Good job. You got the winning ticket. Okay, one more for the junior hires. Y'all ready for this? I need a drum roll. Can y'all help me with the drum roll, please? Three, nine, nine, four, nine, eight. Four, nine, eight. We got a winner. Here you go, sir. Thank you. Okay, what age group do we have next? Three to five year olds. So parents, if you wanna come up and get this one or you can send your kid up, either way. Here we go. Y'all ready for this? The winner is three, nine, nine, three, six, three. Three, six, three. Do I have a winner? Come on up. Give it up for him. Okay, here we go. Oh, let's do kindergarten through third grade. We got one more for that. Okay, throw it in there. Okay, we mix these up. You ready for this? Kindergarten through third grade. And the winning number is 399-375. Three, seven, five, winner! Yep. There you go, thank you very much. Okay, you ready for this? This one is for fourth and fifth graders. You ready, fourth and fifth graders? Get you, here we go, just drawing once. If I can get the number, I can't get the number, here we go. The winning number is three nine nine five three one five three one. Come on up! You're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. You don't win a chicken dinner, but you win prizes, a sweet movie, and headphones. I take it. You forgot one. Jeez. Okay. So, kids, it's the parents' turn and the adults' turn. Here we go. So, I'm gonna call out six numbers. When I, if I call your number, come right up, line up, okay? On this side, please. So I can actually count, because I can't count that good, okay? First service, I drew all guys besides one, and she drew it. So I, hopefully it won't happen this time, or I will have to run out of here really quickly. Uh, first number is 899-045-045. Anybody? No? Wow. Oh, really? Leslie, I don't know what to do with you. What'd you do? 899-043. anybody? Nope, okay. 043. <laughs> Sheila, come on up. 
You both can come up. Next one. Come on. Stand it, gotta stand in line. 899 048 048. Anybody? Come on up. Man, now I'm not gonna draw any guys. I'm in trouble. 899-034-034. Nice, come on up. Oh, I'm gonna get tro I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna hide. You gotta stop drawing. You keep drawing girls' numbers. 899-909-909. Anybody? Who is it? Nobody? Okay. Blake, is it for you? Oh, no. Okay. Here we go. 899-017-017. Blake, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three, four, five. One more. One more. Here we go. 898888. That's a lot of eights. Come on up. I'm gonna do one more for special, special luckness here. Okay. 899-055-055. Come on up, kill shot. Okay. Okay. This is very, very simple how this works. I'm sorry, a girl has to go first. Or, or I will lose. You can come in front. Okay, this is what you do. You spin the wheel, whatever you get, you get a prize. On this wheel, there's two $100 visas. Just saying. Okay, step on up. Spin the wheel. Would you like to say hello to anybody? My sister, Sarah. <laughs> if she wins the gift card, she might take you out to lunch. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, $100 visa! Thank you very much, thanks for playing. I gotta take it out. And if it's a blank spot, you get a water bottle from Club Radio, which is pretty awesome. I take it. Come on, Blakey. Sp spin the wheel, Blake. Who would you like to say hello to? Uh, my lovely mother and my father and my sister Grace and my brother Grant. Nice job. Let's see what he wins. Let's see what he wins. The winner, winner. Oh man, you spin that wheel hard enough to it. There it went. There it went. $25 gift card. Blake's taking you out to lunch today. Okay. Barnes and Noble. No, he's not taking you out to lunch today. He's buying you a buck. Huh? Okay. Leslie. Spin. Would you like to say hello to anybody? Shout out to Club Radio, which is awesome. You guys should listen to it. 100.7 FM. Thank you. I appreciate that. And the winning. Don't look. I wouldn't look. You are not. T-shirt. <laughs> Get her a T-shirt. Come on up. Come on, you ready? S spin the wheel. Would you like to say hello to anybody? All the new people, welcome and keep coming. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, let's see what she wins. Winner, winner. Chicken. $15 gift card. 15. Thank you very much for playing our wonderful game. Come on up. Spin the wheel, yes. Spin it away. Would you like to say hello to anybody? To my beautiful family right here, my new grandson. That's all. You win. $25 gift card, thank you. Thanks for playing. Yeah, y'all should all tune in to Club Radio next week because we're coming live from Israel. It's gonna be awesome. 888 is the lucky number. Okay, spin the wheel away. Would you like to say hello to anybody? Yes, hello to the new song community in the house and out. Woo woo! Here we go. Let's see what you win. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, there it went. 
$25 gift card. Spin the wheel, Killian. Would you like to say hello to anybody? What's up, everybody? Nice one. Y'all might want to pull your tickets back out. If you got 898, 875, come on up. You get a water bottle. Grab it right there. If you have 898, 7, 875, come on up. I got to get rid of this gift card. 875. Anybody? No? Okay. Sure lost, not mine. Jeez. We're doing one more. We're going to get we're gonna give this hundred dollar gift card away. 899-054-054. Anybody? Yeah, there we go. Come on up. Okay. Okay, here we go. You ready for this? I'm even gonna help you out here. Spin away, sir. Would you like to say hello to anybody? No. Okay. It's okay. Here we go. Oh, they're winning. It's going to make it. Come on. Come on. Yeah. $50 gift card. Okay. One more and then I'm done. I'll get in trouble. I'll get kicked off the stage. 898-920. Anybody? Is it? Come on up. Yeah, give it up. Here we go. This is the last one. Here we go, Betty. Here we go. Give it up for Betty, ladies and gentlemen. Spin the wheel. Would you like to say hello to anybody? Hello to Bourgeois. It's her birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Oh! $25 gift card. That is all, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. The one, the only. Austin, that's going to be here on stage. I don't know if there's any more, but there you go. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good? Woo! Woo, yeah. It's later in the day. We all got an extra hour of sleep. We should be doing pretty darn good. So... We're going to play another game and win some more prizes. But mine come in the form of gift cards for the coffee shop. So, or if you are in this area, you get a birthday coin if you answer right. And that's worth how much? Five. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a little game of guess who. So I'm going to throw some hints up there. And I'm going to need two helpers. Who wants to be a helper? Me. Anybody in adult land can be a helper, too. You right there with the blue shirt. Right there. And Brooks will take you. And what we're going to do is as I throw up hints, if you know the answer, you have to raise your hand. Because in kids' ministry, we get a little rambunctious sometimes. And we like to just boop, throw the answer out there. So we make it so they have to raise their hand if they want to answer. If you just holler the answer out, you don't raise your hand, you've given the answer to everyone who has their hand up. So it worked out pretty good in the first one. We only had that happen one time. But <laughs> so the hints will come up. If you know who it is, raise your hand. If I'm looking over here and your, and your hand's up over here, give me a little hoop or something so I look over this way. But we'll go ahead and roll with the first one. I am extremely greedy, selfish, and obsessed with money. Could be anybody. Yes, you way back there. A rich person? Yeah, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. Zacharias? No, but that's a good answer. Zacchaeus? Nope, nope. Next hint. I always threaten to fire my best employee because he's not like me. I always apologize to him when I realize I'm wrong. Gabby? Sullivan? No. <laughs> Mr. Krabs, boom, answer, it is Mr. Krabs, all right, copy card, way back there, hold your hand up, 
There she is. Take that to her. All right. We're in a good mood now. All right. Number two. My hygiene was so bad, I was forced to work night shifts at Atari. I never worked at Atari, so you can't say me. Bill Gates. Boom. Or no, it's not Bill Gates. This is my own game. I made this game up. That's the worst part. Steve Jobs. Take it over that way. Stand up so we can find you. Yeah, I'm messing my own game up. See, what happened was, in the first service, it literally took me like 12 hours to put this game together. Because it's not that easy to find good stuff on bad people and bad stuff on good people, on the internet anyways. So I put this game together, and I'm like, oh, it's so crafty. I have so many hints, and this is going to be so awesome. And they kept getting it on the first hint. And I'm like, no, no, we got to slow down. This is going way too fast. So I forgot who number two was. Number three, I was a righteous king with many faults. Yep. David? That's the answer. And it's right that time. I looked, so we're good. All right. Number four is for this area only. So we got to pay attention. I love to steal. Nope. Bill Gates. Bill Gates, no. Go back. <laughs> Thank you for pointing out my failures today. <laughs> Hint. Oh, back there. Who? Oh, were you here for service? Did you know this already? Winner. Swiper the fox. Although when they get serious, I was not here. Mm -mm. Number five. I never denied God no matter how bad my life got. Job. Number six, I never knew my parents. You were in first service. You're not getting called on. You're out. <laughs> Anybody in adult kid land? Oh, I know. I know you know. You were there when I made the game. <laughs> oh, you, don't, you don't get to answer. <laughs> if you've already answered, you don't get another one. Naomi. Spider-Man, no. Peter Pan. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Number the next hint. I know it. I grew up with a very abusive family. You with the red shirt. Moses, no. Uh oh, gotta raise your hand. Harry Potter. Oh, dead gum them rules anyways. Number seven. I was the first king of the United Kingdom of Israel. Yes. No, quickly. Mm -mm, no. I was stretching. <laughs> no. Who? Solomon. Solomon? No. Close. Back here. Back here. Who said back here? Stand up and be accounted. Saul. Saul. Very good. <laughs> Last but not least, number eight. <laughs> Hint number one. In 1938, I was nominated as Man of the Year by Time Magazine. Steve. Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler. Sorry. Let's go ahead and roll the rest of the hints. I think this guy's really, not that I think of. I think he's interesting. Extremely good artist, uh, but the fact that he couldn't draw people kept him out of art school. He adored children. And did not use tobacco or alcohol at all because he didn't like the taste. So with that, you guys see Doreen. She'll give you a birthday coin. You guys are in five, co five coins today, so that's awesome. Thanks so much for helping. Yep, go down and, oh yeah, Steve gets something. Look at him sticking up for you. I was gonna, I was gonna jip you. But that brings a good point to what, to what I wanna get rolling today and where I, where I want your minds, where your, I want your minds to be is a lot of times in today, we'll look at someone and we instantly judge them. We say, oh, I know that guy. You know, he's covered in tattoos, he's got long hair. He's wearing black. No, I don't want to be around that person. Or he's in a suit, hair's done nice, he's got nice shoes, came out of a 
$500,000 sports car. I want, to, I want to go meet that guy. And a lot of times, we, we look at someone and we instantly judge them. But as you've seen, just by that Hitler example, there can be wolf in sheep's clothing. So with that, don't judge too fast. If you take anything from this game, is never, ever judge someone by their appearance. Get to know that person. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But for now, Shane's going to come up. Oh, no, we got a video. We got a video we're going to roll, and then Shane's going to come up, and we're going to get to the meat and potatoes and stuff. That's how we do it. Potatoes. Potatoes. Yummy. Hi, everyone. I'm Haley. Think about the people who lead you. Your teachers, your parents, and the president. People who are in charge are good leaders when they do what's best for you. But what happens when they don't do what's best for you? God's people in Israel had some bad kings, evil kings. Let's watch. God's people, the nation of Israel, had been led by many people over the years. Moses, Joshua, and then several judges. Do you remember Deborah, Gideon, and Samson? Then came Samuel, and God's people asked for a king. Saul became king, and then David, and then Solomon. By the time King Solomon died, the nation of Israel had split into two kingdoms, Israel, the northern kingdom, and Judah, the southern kingdom. And a time began when the nation of Israel was ruled by kings who did not love God and did not lead God's people like they should. Baasha was the third king to rule over Israel. He was an evil king. Baasha had killed Israel's second king, King Nadab, to take over the throne. Baasha did evil things, and he led the people of Israel to sin. This made God angry. God sent a prophet to tell Baasha that he would not be king anymore. Baasha died, and his son Elah became Israel's king. Elah wasn't king for very long, and he wasn't a very good king. Elah was like his father, and he made God angry because he worshiped idols and caused Israel to sin. After two years, Zimri, a commander in Elah's army, planned to kill Elah, and he did. Zimri killed Elah and everyone in Elah's family. Zimri became king, and he acted like Elah and Baasha. He was an evil king and caused Israel to sin. The people of Israel didn't want Zimri to be king. The people chose Amri, the commander of the army, to be king of Israel. Amri took over the city Zimri was in, and Zimri was afraid. He knew he could not win against Amri. Zimri was king for just seven days when he went into his house and set it on fire. The house burnt down with Zimri inside, and Zimri died. Now Amri was king, the sixth king of Israel. While Amri was king, he bought a hill and built a city named Samaria. Amri was like the kings before him. He worshipped idols and caused Israel to sin. This made God angry. Amri died, and his son Ahab became king of Israel. Ahab was more evil than the kings who were before him. More evil than Amri, more evil than Zimri, more evil than Elah, and more evil than Baasha. Ahab was a very evil king. He married Jezebel, who encouraged him to do evil things. Ahab began to serve and worship the false god Baal. He built an altar for Baal in Samaria, and all the things Ahab did made God very angry. God's people asked for a king to lead them, but no king led them perfectly. Was there any king on earth who would be faithful? God would send a king from heaven, his own son, who would lead God's people back to God. He would be the king of all kings, Jesus Christ. Those were some bad, bad kings. They did not love God, and they did not lead God's people like they should. We should pray for our leaders. The best news is that Jesus is our true king. See you next time. Good morning. 
Are all the kids up here? Yeah. We got lots of coins to give out. You guys want coins? Yeah. Yeah. All right. No more? All right, who got the most coins? Oh. Who who's in control of giving out coins? I am. So I'm the king, okay? All right, I'm the king. And look. Hey, Emily, that's all the money I got. And I'm the king, so I can do whatever I want. And I want to be greedy, so I think I'm going to take your coins back. Everybody put your coins back in. Well, if you already earned it, you can keep it. But if you just got coins, you got to put them back, because I'm the king. And I want money. I want you guys to be poor. I'm going to suppress you. Yeah, give them. <laughs> All right. So, thank you, sir. Don't worry. We'll we'll get we'll get some some coins out there, okay? What did you guys think about that video? Awesome. It was awesome. Who was who's in control of the Israelites? A lot of different kings, right? What do kings do? Gabby, they can they control the people they rule over. That's right. So, what do you think? Do you think a lot of those kings? What What do you think ruled over those kings? Like, do you think that they were focused on Jesus, Brooks? You think the kings were focused on Jesus? No. So they they worshipped other idols. What else did they have rule their lives? Rachel. Some of them got married and maybe they, they married the wrong person or they, the, so, something went wrong because they weren't following the plan that had been established. Gabby. Yes, they praised statues and money. All these different things became their kings, their rulers, and they ruled over them. We're going to talk about different things that we can allow to rule our lives. Now, right now, we live in the United States of America, so we don't have a king, right? We have... We do? Well, he might think he's a king. I don't know. <laughs> but... <laughs> well, but we, we're going to lead up to that, okay? <laughs> so what, what are kings or what are those, these people? We have man, right? Men or leaders, they can rule over us. And this is us. This is a this is, uh, little, little guy that's me. So that's whoever. And there's these different things that can rule over people. All right, we have men, and is men is man always going to come through for us, man or woman? They can fail us, right? They can get controlled by temptations such as money or emotions, things like that, and it can lead them to do do things. So if we look for man for our happiness, we're pretty much slaves to whatever that that controlling power is doing, right? Okay, so we can have other people that control us, like maybe it could be our bosses, a boss, a uh, government. And there are still countries out there where they have evil kings that suppress people because of what they believe in, or they want to take away their money, or they, they can starve them because they, they want to rule over the people. Okay, what else can rule over us? Rachel. Uh, Besides people. Something. Evan. Money. Money, which is a... What? 
A materialistic thing? What? It's paper that has value. It's, it's, that's how. <laughs> You're right, it is. Okay, materialistic things. And money was said. Money. So all these, these materialistic things can affect men who are leaders, which can affect you as a person. What else, what else are, are things? Emily. TV. Very good. TV. We can let TV control us. We fill our minds with whatever's on the TV. We're like zombies, and we buy into whatever the message is, right? Rachel. Radio, music, 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 video games. So we can allow these things to rule over us. Like these things become more important in our lives than anything else. And you have one, Ethan? Drugs, that's a very good one. Drugs, some people look to drugs for their happiness. And all these things, these things that the, if we look to other men, we look to materialistic things, they all lead us to slavery and bondage. Our lives are not the way that they could be. And there's, there's also another thing that can control our lives. And these are things like, do you got one? Well, alcohol is kind of a materialistic thing, but that's a good thing. That's a, that's a good answer. <laughs> not a good thing. <laughs> Sorry about that. I hope I spelled it right. I don't think I did. I think, okay. You can spell it. Oh, well, you got the point. Okay. And our emotions. That's what I was looking for, emotions. We can let our emotions control us, right? People can do really crazy things if they let their emotions rule over them. So what are some emotions that we might have? Who haven't I heard from? Anybody else? Yes. Happy. Happy is an emotion. Happy is definitely an emotion. But where that happiness comes from is, is what's important. Ethan. You have an emotion? What is it? Depression? Depression? Um, what's a reason why we might be depressed? We live in... We live in the world. There's a lot of... <laughs> there can be a lot of depressing things that we see. But the world can be a good place, too. It, it's all how you look at it. So we have... If you're in depression, you're usually in a lot of fear. You have fear, maybe about who you are, your identity, um, just no hope. Yes, Gabby? Mad, angry. People do crazy things when they're angry, don't they? Like, if Reese took the last piece of pizza and Brooks wanted it, <laughs> And then he went and he just slammed it in her face, shoved it in her face. <laughs> like, that's, that's not a good thing, right? You guys are brother and sister. You got to love each other. So these things can drive us to do things that we probably shouldn't do. So what is another thing that we can allow to rule our lives, which will take us as far as we can go, we'll fulfill every need in our life. Remember, the Israelites, they kept looking to men and other things to control their lives, to, to find their happiness or their substance. But there was, there was only one thing that was eventually going to lead to true... 
Yes, somebody, <laughs> the true, one thing was gonna lead to peace, love, and happiness. And this, these are gonna equal what? What one thing? We have all these things up here, right, that, that can rule our lives. How about we take away all these things and we just allow one thing to rule our lives? I know you guys are itching to tell me what, what it is. It's awesomeness. Where does awesomeness come from? What can we have to rule over us? If you guys know it, I'm going to count to three and I want you to yell it as loud as you can. Okay? One, two, are you going to tell me something silly? Okay. Three. Jesus, God. All right. So we let Jesus rule over our lives. We don't have the need for all those other things to rule over our lives, right? Oh, well, now he's happy. He, was, he didn't have any, any expression. Okay. All right, there we go. He's a happy guy. Okay, so in order for these, all these can only, can only add up unless it equals this, and that's the symbol of Jesus. So Jesus paid the price for our sins, and we know that when we look to all these other things to rule our lives, we can never find what we're looking for. If you guys don't believe me, I've, I've been down that road searching, searching for something in this world. And the only place that you can find the true peace, love, and happiness is through Jesus. And he's, no matter what you've done or what you let rule your life in the past, he gives us grace and he loves us, and he has created each and every one of you for a special purpose. Everybody here has immense potential in something, and God has a plan for you. So the only way that you're gonna know what that is is if you put Jesus as the ruler of your life. I've seen it, I, I know it, I, I believe with it with all my heart. Uh, I have a beautiful wife and a son because I, I did this, and that was my dream. And there's still things going on. Like, I get to hang out here with you guys, you know, on the weekends, and we get to have fun, and we get to learn. But that's the only way that it'll happen is for you to find your, your guys' potential. So with, yes, you, I know you got, you got something. What do you got, Ethan? Oh, it can, once you... <laughs> It can be written either way. Like, do you guys, you guys know about math, right? So th this equals this. So it can be, it can be flipped around too. I think there's a, a, a math. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to say nothing, but there's like some kind of math law where when you have algebra, <laughs> yeah, it's algebra. So. <laughs> But the equation, you got to understand, the equation will not work out unless we have this. This, well, I was just saying, like, happiness and love and peace. Okay, you guys got the point, right? Who's, who's going to rule our lives? Jesus. And because Jesus died on the cross, we get a free gift of grace, right? Yeah. And we don't owe anything. Sometimes when we do wrong things, we feel like we're a bad person and we, we have to redeem ourselves. But no, Jesus is our redeemer. So you guys each sitting down here, you each get five point coin. That's a free gift, just like the gift that Jesus gives us in his grace. And with that, uh, Austin is gonna come up and he's gonna share his heart. Um, we're going to talk about the mission of New Song, uh, what we're about, and just the things that God has done in, in my buddy Austin's life. So, thanks. Thank you, <laughs>
Let's just take this temptation and put it over here. <laughs> temptation, yeah. How's everybody doing? Good. Everybody got that extra hour to sleep, feeling well rested? Don't know about that. You were here pretty early, so you might not have got that extra hour. Yes? Well, it doesn't get any better than that. When you win a movie in headphones, that's a good day. <laughs> well, we started talking about family service and when we were going to do it and when the timing was going to be right. And then, it, you know, we started thinking, well, why not do it right after Trunk or Treat? That's the perfect time. So Shane and I sat down and we started getting our, our, our sermon together and, and uh, Kurt... Doreen and Aaron came up to me, the youth pastors, and everybody knows Kurt. And he said, Austin, when you do this, we want you to tie ODS into it. Now, if you've been coming here for a while, you know what ODS is. If you're brand new today, you might be going, hmm, what is this ODS? Odds. I'm out on that. I could spend hours telling you what ODS is, but I don't have that kind of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to try to summarize it into a story that pertains to me. It's, it's my path from the day I walked through that door to being here right now. It's not a very long story. Um, the Owen outreach is just, it's just that. You're just reaching out. You're, you're connecting with people. We do it every day. And we don't think anything about it until we put Christ in there. And then sometimes fear gets in. And we go, wow. I don't know if I really want to talk to that guy about Christ. You know, that's, that's kind of a touchy situation. Or I just barely know this person. I try to make it a point every day to talk to someone and let them know my feelings and beliefs on this. Now, the Austin two and a half years ago, mm-mm, oh, no. That was a conversation I would dodge. I was lost. I didn't know where I was going. And you'll find today especially if you're here for the first time, you and I share a lot. And we'll, we'll dive into that in a little bit. Um, you know, as I said, Trunk or Treat is a fantastic thing that gives us an opportunity to reach out to the community, talk to people. There's lots of other things that this church provides. This church is absolutely amazing. We have rag bags, we have men's groups, women's groups, kids' ministry, uh, the list goes on and on, on all of the possibilities of outreach that we provide. And it's absolutely phenomenal, the things that we do. A lot of times, all it takes, though, is getting asked by a friend. Two and a half years ago, about well, two years ago, roughly, sitting at home on a Wednesday, phone rings. It's my buddy. He calls me. It's this time of year. He says, hey, what are you doing on Sunday? Nothing. When are we going hunting? Let's do this. He goes, hey, you want to go to church? Whew. Yeah. Well, you know you say no to that. That's express lane. You're going. So it's like, man, I don't know. You know, so I didn't, I never, I've never gone to church. You know, we did a little church shopping here and there. But, you know, we never went. I grew up in a non-Christian home that did not believe in Jesus. We did not believe that he existed. We believe that things happen by accident. It was good luck when things came upon you. And that's how I was raised. So I knew kind of, you know, he, he was up on the cross, and yeah, he, he forgave people. And I get that. That's cool. But I didn't know what that meant. So I, I think about it. I said, well, you know, I don't know. And he was really good about it. He said, you know what, just take your time. Think it over. It's not till Sunday. This is Wednesday. You got time. Yeah, I don't know. So I came up with every excuse. I don't like to dress up, which is a fib, because I do. <laughs> you know, it's, it's early in the morning. You know, people are, I, I don't know anybody there. They're going to judge me. And he says, you know what? It's not like that. He goes, our church is different. Yeah, right. That's what every church says. He goes, no, really, it is. Come out. I'll buy you a coffee. We have a coffee shop there. I said, wow, this church's got a coffee shop. It can't be all bad. So, <laughs> all right. So I talk it over. You know, my wife and I had talked it over many times in the course of the days leading up. I said, you know, I just kind of felt this, this burning in my heart. And I said, you know, what? I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to see what it's like. 
what do I got to lose? You know, my daughter was going to, to uh, another church with our daycare provider, and she's coming home asking me questions I don't have answers to. You know, so why not? So I go. I sat right there by that hole in the wall because I brought my two kids. Gabby, Gabby went to kids' men, so now I'm down one. There goes my support group. <laughs> I'm like, this is, I'm sweating. I'm sweating a lot. And if you know me, that's pretty typical, but I was sweating a lot that day. So I'm back there by the cubby hole, and I'm thinking everybody's judging me. You know, who is this sinner? I can smell this sin on him. <laughs> so, I mean, and all these thoughts are going through my head, and people were constantly coming up, hey, how you doing? I'm glad you're here. How you doing? Glad to see you here today. They don't even know me. And I was like, yeah, right, whatever, okay, mm, yeah. And we moved on. That service was amazing. It opened so many doors that I later would find. But coming through the door was the hardest thing that I had ever done. I was scared. Oh, man, was I scared. I had fear in my heart, and I was afraid I was going to be judged. But because someone reached out to me through a random act of kindness, I stand here today. If you follow me on Facebook, which some of you do, I am huge on random acts of kindness because that is the easiest way to outreach to people. And it's the beginning of the ODS pillar. Just paying it forward. That's all you got to do. The D in ODS talks about discipleship. A couple weeks after the, the cubby hole incident, I'm sitting here. It's communion. Oh, man. I, got, I remember exactly where I was sitting because that area was hot. And I, I really enjoyed the ceiling fans, so I was like, I'm going to go sit by those. So I sat two rows back from the ceiling fans, and the, the, the juice is getting passed out, the bread's getting passed out, and I'm sitting there, and I have to apologize, Kurt. I have no idea what Kurt said that day. Not a word. Because in my head, I'm waging a war. And I'm sitting there going, do I want to do this? Is this really the path I want to go down? If I start doing this, People are going to look at me differently. The people that know my past are going to call me a hypocrite. Is this really the way that I want to go? <laughs> well, the answer is yes. <laughs> no coins for you guys. So, <laughs> um, so I did it. I drank that juice and I ate the bread. And then I sat there, and I said, you know, if we're going to do this, you're going to do it. You're going to put your stake in the sand. You're going to make that hard 90, and you're going to go down the right path. It's time to grow up. It's time to be a better dad. It's time to be a better brother. It's time to be a better husband. If you're going to do this, Jesus will show you how. And I felt a burning inside of me that I'd never felt before and a hunger to want to know more about who Jesus was. And trust me when I say this, two years ago, if someone was up here saying the exact same words to me, I would have said, this guy is crazy. There is no way that happens. But it does. I can tell you from experience. It is so overwhelming at times to speak in front of you guys. If you were here first service, you know. It gets so overwhelming, I just get choked up. I can't even talk about it. Because where he has taken me two years ago from that cubby hole to here today has been one of the most fantastic rides I've ever been on. Which brings us to the S in ODS. Don't you start doing it, Sheila. <laughs> Which is servant leader. Paying it forward. It doesn't take much to do. It's just that random act of kindness that moves someone forward. You, you take that and you mix it in with just bringing them in. Hey, how you doing? It's that handshake when someone looks like they're having a bad day. 
It's buying that cup of coffee for the person behind you when you're in line at Starbucks. Who doesn't love free coffee? I mean, come on. Joy gets free coffee all the time. <laughs> Not because she's behind me, though. But servant leadership, like I said in the beginning, ODS can take years to learn. When Kurt first mentioned ODS a year ago to me, I was like, I have no idea what this means. None. And now I live it. And I know exactly what it means. And I still don't get it all. ODS is powerful. Reaching out, learning, mentoring, teaching, and then servant leadership. That's ODS. Servant leadership is just giving someone your time. Time is precious. Anybody got too much time on their hands? No one. We all say, man, I wish I had more time. I wish I had more time to do this. I wish I had more time to spend with my kids. I wish I had more time to do this. But when you give your time to someone, they notice that. It's a gift. You can't get it back. You can't say, well, hey, Shane, you know those 30 minutes I gave you, buddy? I need that back because I need to put that somewhere else. I didn't do right time management. And that's what servant leadership is. Servant leadership is giving time back to someone. And we can all do this. That's the best thing about it. In kids' ministry, we strive on this. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Patty was up here. Kurt was interviewing her. And she hit the nail on the head. And she said, this is not a church. It's a family. I believe that so much. Because where else would you go and drop your kids off to a total stranger for an hour? If Walmart had a daycare, would you just drop them off and go shopping? No. Especially if you look like me. Like, welcome to Walmart. Let me have your kid. <laughs> but people do that every week. And you give me the chance to reach out and imprint these kids, to help them, to make them want to be better people. I learn more stuff on how to be a better person from this group of children than I have from most adults in my life. And it is absolutely amazing, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. What you guys do without even knowing, you've already done the outreach part. So thank you. Um, you guys. Maybe not these two, but <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up. I just want to say, you know, two and a half years ago, I got asked to do something that I wasn't sure of. If you're here today and you're, you're hammering those questions out, you're fighting those demons, there are a lot of people that have been down that road. A lot. You're not alone. So I thank you for your time, and thanks for listening.